Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another Foxy Games UK News video. So, quite a lot's happened over the last couple of days, I think we can all agree. Not least, Mark Cerny and AMD coming out to discuss the very early vision, well, at least in simulation form, the PlayStation 6. Yes, it exists, as I say, in simulation form. But we're going to get into all of that and why I believe it should not be compared to an RTX 5090. But I'll go into that a bit later in the video, but I'm going to give you all the rundown of what's happened in terms of Sony, which is a surprise to me that they come out so early, especially since the PS6 will not be out for at least a few years, according to the PlayStation, you know, architect Mark Cerny. All links are available in this video's description. And our new story comes courtesy today via TheVerge.com. If you like this sort of thing, like, subscribe, hit notification, and all that good stuff. So on with the headline. Sony has teased the new GPU tech for the PlayStation 6 console. AMD has plenty of tricks coming to let GPUs run faster and with more efficiency and greater ray tracing capability. Sounds great for handhelds too. And so with that, Sony's next console, PlayStation 6, is coming in a few years time, according to someone who I believe to make that claim, Mark Cerny, who's the lead architect of PS5 and PS5 Pro, joined Jack Hunye. I think I pronounced that name correctly, the SVP, that's Senior Vice President and Global Manager of AMD's Computing and Graphics Group. So in a recent YouTube video uploaded on PlayStation's account, wherein the, well, the pair spend nine minutes in total going through some very specific co-developed advancements in graphics technology that will come to the next console, but the pair cautioned that the technologies are still in the very early days and only exist in simulation form right now. But much of it boils down to how the companies are working to make it easier for GPUs to handle graphics upscaling, which includes ray tracing and the super intensive path tracing technologies, techniques used to make game worlds look more realistic. Mark Cerny says, and I quote, the current approach has reached its limit. So Sony is working with AMD to integrate components of its next-gen RDNA architecture in future consoles. AMD's Hunye introduced Radiance cores, similar in theory to NVIDIA's RT cores that are really dedicated to handling ray tracing and path tracing. In addition to Sony's new consoles having the new cores, it will almost certainly be built into AMD's future desktop GPUs too, and likely within whatever it's assisting with its Xbox partnership. And in the video, you can clearly hear, you know, the AMD general manager say it will be available to all gamers on all platforms. They're sharing this technology. It's a co-developed tech not exclusive to Sony, though I suspect Sony will get first dibs and be able to tailor the technology more, well, refine the technology to its needs. Much as it's, as it's really done with the technology, it's a developed to share with AMD for PlayStation 5 and Pro consoles, which has also in no doubt helped the GPU market for PCs as well going forward. So the Radiance cores supposedly deliver a speed boost to performance, freeing up other components to quickly process shaders and textures instead of having to spin so many plates. This new GPU tech will also benefit from the advancements in AMD's FSR Redstone, its latest AI-assisted upscaling technology such as Neural Radiance caching, as well as likely whatever upscaling tech comes after. Another key area of improvement is compression, which will free up more bandwidth for GPUs, which is very precious bandwidth in GPUs. It really dictates a lot of how your game is going to run and perform on screen. And to run future games at peak performance and fidelity, Sony's improving on the Delta Color Compression, or DCC technique, used on the PS5 and PS5 Pro. 
The technique compresses textures and render targets. Its next hardware will utilize a new, more efficient technique called universal compression that compresses everything into the pipeline. Hingen says that this will let the GPU deliver more detail, higher frame rates and at greater efficiency. More compression could raise the performance ceiling of the GPU, so it should also let it run more efficiently in low power mode should the need arise. Now, you've got to say that AMD are really at the forefront of these low power solutions, which has been very helpful to, uh, you know, the Sony and Microsoft consoles over the years. But speaking of, it's easy to see how these improvements could benefit the rumored PlayStation handheld that's allegedly in development. Sony and AMD really work to reduce the stress on GPUs, which could theoretically be applied to any form factor, such as a handheld. Sony has also already made strides in efficiency on the PS5 with the new power saving mode that can scale back game performance in favor of lower power consumption. In a nutshell, those are the key ingredients necessary to run games on a handheld. It's encouraging to see Sony being proactive about showing how it's working to make the GPUs in its upcoming devices, be it the PlayStation 6 or its handheld, as capable as possible. For now though, we'll pretend that this news doesn't really cast a shadow over the aging PS5 and not as powerful as we'd hoped, PS5 Pro, according to them. I actually absolutely think that PS5 Pro has proven its chops. I mean, a lot of the games that can only run at 30 uh, on the standard PS5 are running at 60 on the PS5 Pro in spite of that very meager CPU bump. But at the end of the day, an opinion is an opinion is an opinion, and there are more opinions than, uh, well, we won't go there. But I've seen some comparing the PlayStation 6 GPU capabilities, the Sony and AMD collaboration for new Radiance cores, offering faster, better ray tracing, while well, it's set to rival the RTX 5090. And we know how much that GPU costs. But look, this is a poor comparison to make because it is out of time and out of pocket. Let me explain. By the time PlayStation 6 launches, which I, I estimate to be holiday 2028, while the RTX 5090, simply put, will be in the obsolescent bin of GPUs because uh, the technology moves so fast, they'll be onto their 60 series, probably at the end of that run, maybe we'll be talking about the RTX 70 series. And you know, due to the leaps and bounds in AI and machine learning technologies, well, with great advances, RTX 5090, well, yeah, I agree, is a top tier GPU by today's standards. But PlayStation 6 and RTX 5090 comparisons are really only good for the next 12 to 18 months because no doubt Nvidia will release the 60 series which will dwarf 5090 in comparison, killing the comparison of the as yet unreleased PlayStation 6. So PlayStation 6 is always going to be up against the very latest GPUs available on PC and uh, in three years time, well, nobody's going to really be talking about the 5090 except how cheaply you can get them on eBay. So in a nutshell, in three years time, this comparison, PlayStation 6, RTX 5090 will be mute. And that's not to put the 5090 down, it's the best probably graphics card you can get on the market right now and you'll pay a pretty penny for it. But in three years time, you know how this industry moves so fast, AI, everything else, machine learning, how, you know, performant will a 5090 be compared to the newer GPUs? But also there is a pause for concern because Elon Musk, Mr. Tesla, well, yeah, he's been talking up AI as the future of gaming. And there have been some examples posted onto the X social media platform, which is really something to be concerned about because, yeah, AI, if used properly, if used responsibly, can enhance gaming and can enhance the workloads, you know, make it easier for developers. But if you're going to use AI to completely create games with, you know, few people, 
So yeah, I doing all of the work. Well, it's not going to be original, is it? It's going to look like, I mean, a lot of the examples I've seen are, you know, men in spacesuits walking down corridors, somewhat rem reminiscent of the Dead Space series. So it's all going to be just, you know, soulless. So let's hope that Sony, Microsoft, and indeed Nintendo, as they jump on the AI bandwagon sooner rather than later, let's hope these companies use the tools available to really help and enhance the development environment rather than outright replace it. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Sound off in the comments, because that brings us to the end of this particular video. What do you think about PlayStation 6, the simulated PlayStation 6 uh, form? Not even a form factor, it's all simulation, but there you go. They have gotta start from somewhere. And what do you think about the three years, two years perhaps, how long do you think it will be before we get the PlayStation 6? Do you think it's launching holiday 2027 or holiday 2028, which is my belief, holiday 2028. I don't have anything firm on that, it's just a, an opinion. But let me know in the comments. And always remember, play games.